Hello and welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Special Hobbies 148 scale. This is the Tempest Mark II. Okay, now a little bit here. This is actually Eddard's kit. So if you've seen the Eddard's Tempest Mark V, uh, this is the Mark II version. Obviously, this is one with the radio engine versus the normal inline with the big scoop underneath. Apparently, there was a little bit of a deal done between both companies. So Special Hobby has got the first release of this one and then I'm sure we will see Eddard releasing their version of it a little bit later down the line. As you can see, classic, iconic aircraft, uh, actually this one, very similar to the sort of Seafire uh, and it's designed, but obviously the predecessor to this one. This is the last of the radio engine fighters, as it points out on there. It is the high-tech kit, so we get some bits and pieces in with this one as well. As you can see, some nice options down in there for the markings as well, and you can see there's that gorgeous sort of radio engine and we get some wheels down in there. So your kit number for this one is 48214. A little bit more just down on there. Okay, and in the box we are greeted by, as you can see, if I get this to stand up, we've got our instructions and we have obviously a pre-sealed bag, which actually does look very Eddard-esque, as you can see, they're standard sort of uh, sprue colours and things like that down in there. So anyway, as always, we will start in the, the instructions. Okay, so as you can see, we have got other versions is where it's come from, all right? So there's a lot of this stuff down in here you're not gonna be using. So uh, obviously familiarize yourself right the way through on that one, all right? So we have got a little bit of photo etch down in here, some resin parts as well, which is quite nice, and obviously the all important mask set. So that's good. Okay, instructions, nice and open. Uh, we can see with the color as well, pointing out points of interest and obviously for your color call outs as you go through. So that's quite nice. So we've got obviously the seat, cockpit areas going down there. Looks like we've got decals, uh, which are gonna be going on for the face of the instrument panel. We've got the side framing with the throttles and uh, the engine controls and then building up the actual cockpit itself going through. So that's quite nice. Okay, the radial engine itself isn't what I was expecting. Uh, it's obviously pits down in here, so we've got the actual uh, various chunks into it, and then you're gonna have the front plate go onto this one, and then obviously bulkhead going in. Interesting way of doing that one. All right, so the various parts going in, so we've got the tailwheel section, the cockpit, and obviously the engine being fitted in there. And again, we can cut open some of the areas at the front of the cowling to reveal obviously that gorgeous engine. Okay, some more parts being fitted down to the side walls as well, going in there. So we've got some decals and various things, adding more controls down in there. Wheel wells, uh, obviously, so we've got the upper and lower wing parts with the wheel wells, all the details being added into that one. So some nice touches of detail down in there. Okay, both sides, as you can see. Oops, stuck together. Okay, and then obviously the upper sides going down and then obviously the radiator being fitted down into there and those being sandwiched down in between. Front end of the cow being fitted down onto the engine area. We've got this grill, depending on ver which version you're doing, obviously the sort of louver door grill or the solid piece being fitted down in there. A few more engine parts, uh, engine control parts, it looks like down in there in the cockpit area being fitted down. And then again, tail planes being fitted on this one and the rudder, so it's quite nice. So it looks like it's not poseable, but you could nip these off and actually then pose the uh, tail planes into whatever angle you wanted. And obviously same goes with the rudder, which is slightly uh, usable anyway. Okay, canopy areas being fitted in. Again, really nice level of detail going down in there. So that canopy being fitted onto this one. Tail wheel being fitted down in there, the doors. Okay, then we've actually got the wheels as well. So it looks like you've got options. You could use obviously the kit part ones, but I think we do get some resin ones down in here as well. So choice is yours for there. And then obviously gear being fitted onto this one. We've got the landing lights and identification lights being fitted down into there, just like that. Okay, and then we've got actuators for the gear and the various parts being fitted down into there, the doors being fitted onto this one, and then last up, we're working with the prop and the canopy and a few parts as well, uh, little bits of photo etch we assume for the actual latches for the cowlings being in the open position. Okay, so a nice touch with those. Okay, and then last up, obviously we've got the weapons fit, so you've got standard sort of tanks onto this one, or we have got a couple of rockets as well if you wanted to fit those underneath the wings. Again, mask sets we spoke about before down in here, so you've got the canopy for the masks and the wheels right the way through this one, and obviously for some of the lights, so that's quite nice. Actual aircraft markings themselves, so obviously the standard um, RAF sort of uh, C markings, so we've got the C grey, uh, we've got the ocean grey, and with the dark green, that sort of post-war colour scheme. 
Oh, we've got a very nice one down in here in the silver. So that's quite nice, I mean, a little bit different. Got another C1 just down in here. Okay, and then again, we've got some other really nice ones as well. So we've obviously got this one down in here from the uh, Pakistani Air Force with the sand. And again, it looks like we've got the Azores blue underneath. Okay, and then obviously we've got this one over here, which is the, uh, uh, which is, this is the Indian Air Force, I do believe with the sort of identification marks with the black tips so that's actually very nice indeed with the red spinner all right and a few of the other bits and pieces they do and as you can see down in here we've got various things if you wanted to do with different ones and again the gorgeous one with the actual inline tempest engine as well for other versions as we can see looks very nice indeed we have to say so in the bag we are greeted by everything all in here interesting masks I haven't seen that type before okay so we've got the actual decal sheet and also we've got a photo etched little fret at the back here we'll uh, have a look at those in a moment again we've got some all important resin parts that's quite nice we've got that standard wheel of uh, with the actual clear parts on there that's interesting the drop tanks are in clear didn't realize they were ever clear but there we go and then obviously some gorgeous ones so we've got fuselage parts we've got the wing sections and again you, one glance at that you can just see that it's uh, Eddard's beautifully cast right the way through so have a good look at those in a moment so first up we've got the decals so we can get in here this is one of those which will come out we'll never go back in Okay, so we've got a lovely little bit of photo etch as well. Okay, so having a look to see. So these are Eddard's decals, which fills you somewhat with dread. But it looks like this is the old type. They look very shiny. Again, I know there's a lot of things going on, but you can probably see it on the carrier and everything else like that. This looks more like the old style. They look very, very glossy. That's my only worry. In fact, incredibly glossy. Um, there's no actual date on these. So I'm not sure if it's the new type or the old type of uh, decals that they're doing. But they just, I thought the newer type looked very matte. These look more glossy, as you can see. But generally, beautifully done, all nicely in register. You can see them right the way through on all of those. That's quite nice. We've got a tiny little bit of photo etch again. Very nicely done. So we've got some harnesses down in there. So that's quite nice. And then we've got a mask there, which is quite strange because I don't think I've seen one like this before. It's like a sheet that's stuck on another sheet. So again, it looks very much like brown paper, but we're assuming it is all nice and good. Okay, so we'll just keep those safe over there. Okay, so looking at the parts, we'll start off with the main fuselage parts and as you can see that gorgeous detail loads of tiny tiny detail riveting and the nice thing is yeah that's raised rivets as well as recessed on this so again you've got raised rivets running around it as well as recessed rivets incredibly fine again we've been speaking about it a lot recently with different companies making incredibly accurate in scale riveting and again, it's so small and on this one, it's very difficult even for the camera to pick it out. But hopefully you can see that, especially on the tail there. You can see all of that riveting is in there. And again, on the inside, beautifully polished molds. We've got the detail for the actual walls and things like that. And again, you're going to be opening up one of these anyway for these cows. Although it looks like there's no actual mark to follow. So you're going to be cutting from the outside in the actual panel to take off these panels if you wanted to have the cowl on the open position but there is a big uh, mark on the inside of it so uh, some work to be needed there but very nice indeed then we've got the wing sections <clears throat> as you can see we've got all the wings looking gorgeous and again the detail in the riveting incredibly fine but you can probably see the ghosting coming through for the parts underneath uh, but again very very nicely done We've got the bumps there as well for the cannons. But uh, generally, you see the landing lights, the panels, the access panels, all the various areas under here, beautifully done. Lovely riveted 
uh, aircraft and obviously replicated in the model as well incredibly fine and again it's one of these where obviously on the camera they like quite noticeable the naked eye even though my eyes now are failing me uh, they are very very fine so you just worry sometimes about coats of primer painting weathering if they're still going to be there at the end of it generally though very nice again on the inside you can see the wheel well detail with all the ribbing showing through from your wheel wells and then obviously the underside one very nice indeed okay <clears throat> next up we've obviously got some of the engine parts down in here so we've got the front ends and things so over on here we've got the control surfaces we've got the spinner actuators for the gear and then obviously we've got some of the cockpit detail there at the top front end of the engine we've got the top of the back of the canopy area some more i think we've got the ailerons cowlings spinner Again, these uh, different instrument panels down in here. And then obviously at the top of the engine, we've got the louvered one, we assume is more for the desert aircraft for more cooling at the back. And then obviously we've got the exhausts down here, tiny little exhausts. And again, beautifully done. Okay, as I said before, it's a little bit generic, obviously with the other Tempest. Uh, so uh, yes, as you can see, different props, various things going down in here, different tailplanes and rudders. So again, we were saying about making sure you got your right parts so uh, it might be well worth having a quick look through the instructions fully to see which ones you're using so you don't accidentally stick the wrong one on so that's all very nice you can see clean right the way through no ejector pin marks inside the doors or anything else like that very very nice indeed okay some of the smaller parts lots and lots of generic parts down in here again so as you can see loads of stuff going on and then again okay, if we start up here We've got obviously lots of various control areas down in the wheel wells, the gear, the cockpit area. We've got the levers, all the various things you might imagine right the way through. And again, like we were saying, we do have the other Tempest version in here as well. So a lot of these parts are not going to be used. Cockpit floor, all the general parts, as you can see, beautifully done. Good, clean, crisp molding on everything. And even on these small parts, as you can see, very, very nicely done indeed. Okay, last up. So we've got some of the rockets down in here. The wheels, like we were saying, we've got both types. We'll look at that in a moment. But as you can see, we've got the rockets, some of the panelling for the sides of the cockpit, wheel wells, hubs, things like that, right the way through. Very nice indeed. Okay. And then we have got the resin parts. So down in here, being the high tech version, we get all the nice resiny bits. Yes, so down in here we have the engine being the radial. It only looks like you get one side of the engine, so you can't have both sides up. So it is only the one classic resin. Okay, front again, there is that as the kit part as well. So you've got a choice to replace it with this or the kit part. And again, it's keyed, so you've got the nozzles will be going into the recesses in there. Okay, so you do get replacement cowling sides, so obviously you just ditch that one and not worry about the actual ejector pins that are in the other one. So they're a lot finer, a lot thinner. Very nice indeed. So obviously we get two of those. Nicely done. And then obviously the wheels. So it looks like these may be weight on wheels. If they are, they're very fine. Tiny little bit of a bulge on there. I think you get away with it. Interesting tread pattern. And again, nice that you don't have to do any cleanup with that if it was two plastic hubs. So quite nice down in there. And again, we've got those exhausts and some very, very small, tiny bits down in there. Always check your flashy bits to make sure, which this is a part. So we'll make sure that goes back in the bag where it's obviously come off of this little guy down in here. So never throw away tiny bits you think of flash because many a time I've been bitten and it's not. We also, it's the groove tire as well, which is nice. Trying to keep it straight on the runway for takeoff. And again, very nice indeed. So, just popping that small bit back just before we lose it. Okay, let's just pop these in here. And then over here we've actually got the spinner and the pen for the drive shaft. That's nice. Okay. Right, zip that up. Last up, some of the clear parts. So again, we've got, for some reason, clear drop tanks which I always thought were aluminium. 
uh, or these are the paper ones, whichever one they are. But again, it's the pylons, but for some reason they've done it in clear. Interesting. And then last up, the actual clear parts themselves. It odds sort of famous wheels now. At least it's all stuck to it. Normally they fall off. And you can see on the old wobble test, there's a little bit of distortion, but it is a complex type shapes on these, but they're nice and clear. Again, right the way through, and then obviously all your lights and sights and various things. And interestingly down in here, it actually looks like goggles, but I don't think it is. Obviously some type of light system. Very nice indeed. So yeah, there you have it. Again, it's typical, you know, that's face it, of Eddard reboxed obviously by Special Hobby. The riveting is absolutely gorgeous. It is so fine now. I think we're literally to the limit of what we can do with paint and modeling before you end up filling up those. I know modern paints have got a great ability sometimes to look like you flooded the riveting detail and the panel line detail, but actually when it dries, it comes back. But these are incredibly fine on this, you know, to the point where I'm just a little bit concerned now that that's probably going to be very difficult to see once it's all been done. So you want to make sure your paint's very thin, uh, so you're putting down nice thin coats, because thick coats I think might kill that off. Uh, if you're not too careful with it. Generally though, it's gorgeous, it's really nice. I've got the other one down in there, the standard Tempest, uh, the Mark V, that's a great kit. This one is definitely a beautiful radial version of it as well, so definitely should be in your stash.